time for reassembly, so we will start by using putting the plunger back in the plunger tube. I've seen on um, YouTube where this has been done, and they say it's very difficult. I found that it's not the simplest thing to do either, but important to notice the hole. We will put the pin through that hole, but notice that this also has to be aligned with the pin. So that would be not aligned, that is aligned. Notice how these are parallel now. Okay, let's see if we can get this in here. And I will use a big screwdriver to try to do this. Let's work it down in there. This is very spring loaded. Make sure not to let your hand come off of this or else it goes across the room. Looking, it got out where it's not aligned. Bugger's a pain. Okay, I've got the screwdriver and I was able to push it down in there. Um, and I was able to get the pin started. Once you get it started, you just apply a little pressure and wiggle it and get it right in. But it has to be exactly centered. It's Once you get it started, it's not hard to, to work with, but that will keep it in place but it has to be exactly centered here for the other parts to go back on. Notice that? Now that we've got the plunger spring in and the pin centered, the next piece, if you took this off, would go on this way. So the flat end would go up against the receiver. And then we slide on the stock just like so. Make sure it goes in place. Next we take the um, this metal piece, whatever it's called. It's like a shim for the stock and it goes on just like so. And then you have the spacer and it goes on with the uh, tapered end forward. Then we will start on the nut, stock nut, with the three quarter inch socket. Let's tighten this up. Careful not to over tighten. Our next step is to put on the stock butt pad. Is it called a butt pad? That's what I call it. Oh, okay. And then it has an angle to it, as before, remember the angle. Now that we've got the plunger spring in and also the um, stock pad back on, we will go ahead and do the magazine spring. Okay, we'll put the plug back in. And then the the locking cap on that end, and for this end, we'll put the the retainer t uh, cap in there. Slide it in. Make sure you don't lose that little washer there. And then we will get press that little tab down. So it inserts in there. That little tab will lock into that slot. Make sure that it's locked, otherwise it could pop out in the field if your uh, magazine cap comes loose. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and put the bolt slide and bolt back in. Um, before I do, let me show you something. 
notice that you have the end of the plunger here. This has to be inserted right into that hole there. Um, I didn't put the trigger assembly on intentionally so you could see this. Okay, we go in through the front of the receiver, into the slides. We'll reach in and lift that up and gently slide that into there. We will take our bolt lever, slide it in there, push our, that back and it's locked in. Right. Now we're going to, we will insert the trigger assembly. Just slides down in like so. Look down in and make sure you get the holes aligned. Then we will slide in our trigger pins. That's in. Now we will put on the magazine sleeve spring. Slide in the magazine sleeve. We'll go and lock the bolt back. Put the piston in the uh, the gas piston in the gas piston bracket. Slide that in the end of the magazine tube. We need to let that slide forward so it will actually fit. And work it in. You'll see when the when the um, barrel is in place, we will slide on the forearm. Down, put on the magazine cap. And that's all it is to it. Hopefully we will take it out to the range and fire it and everything will be working and there's no more jamming. Thanks and I hope this helps. Have a good day.